Then I'm very happy to welcome a Killian CEO, Saar Fredersen, to the studio. Saar will give us a little bit of an insight into the recent deal with Merck. Welcome, Saar. Thank you so much. So why do you think that Achillean and Merck make such a good fit? So from Achillean's perspective, I believe that our uh, choice of target this time, an innovative approach to this novel target, uh, need to find or we need to find a partner that could actually develop that into a clinic. And Merck in this case, on the hand, the hand is, is a pharma company that has the abilities to do so. And I was just curious about the fact that Achillean is a not a listed company. Was that relevant in any way in this deal process? No, I don't think so. Perhaps it's a little bit easier when you're not a listed company. Uh, but otherwise, no, I don't think it made a difference. Well, that's a very good and clear answer. <laughs> so what does the deal mean for Achillean? Oh, it means a lot to us. I think the first thing I can think of is that we actually made a decision three years ago to become a biotech with our own pipeline and actually focus on drug discovery in and find those targets that are really interesting within autoimmune diseases or autoinflammation. And this is kind of the first receipt that we actually did well. <laughs> Someone else believed in, in this uh, asset and I think that means the most to us. Why did you make that decision three years ago? Well, we, we started with, with the team. What can we as a team do together? And we early on realized that within the inflammation space, chronic inflammation space, there is still room, a lot of room for innovation. And the team members could relate to that, had been working in the area before. And for the discovery part, it was that we think a small biotech needs to come with innovation to the table to be able to take a position in the value chain when you develop a project from early on and, and moving up in the value chain towards clinical trials and then to the patients. So I think that was the bold part to say, let's start. We are going to find and identify novel targets and make new discoveries and put some innovation into that to get valuable assets uh, as a small biotech. So this is the outcome of a long-term strategy? Yeah, it took some time before we landed in this strategy, of course. Um, but now we have been working um, with a clear goal for almost yeah, three and a half years, almost four years with, with this strategy and continue to build team and knowledge around, around this core idea, so to say. So would you say that's one of the, the key factors that enabled you to, to achieve this deal? Yeah, I think so. The focus, uh, I mean, the, the Alnitac program, which is the one that we made a deal f with Merck, um, it's not the only one. So we, we had to try several ones and we have to be really consistent that the ones that suddenly or rather quick, they can grow big and there could be a lot of research left to do. Then it's probably out of scope for Achillean. Or if to find the right molecules or the right set of molecules, if that is extremely difficult, it's also out of the scope for a small biotech. It becomes too expensive. So having a clear focus and follow that through is one of the key factors, I think. Um, but the team skills is absolutely the number one. Yeah, because of course, all CEOs talk about their team being mm. fantastic because that's what you do, of course. But what does your team have, you think, that really is so special? Um, they have experience, of course. And I think you need experience of sitting both and being innovative in a lab and perhaps sitting on the other side, in the big pharma side, looking for new uh, possible collaborations, new innovation. Uh, and if you have done both and realize that that is, uh, is tricky and choosing the right target is really, really difficult. And you have to have some kind of luck as well, I guess. Um, so that experience of being on, on both sides of that table in combination with scientific skills and above all curiosity and they really live and breathe drug development. I'm so impressed. So, yeah. Because I can imagine it must be quite tough to let some molecule go or some projects to say, okay, no, this is too complicated. This is too expensive. 
It's easy to say when you start. Then you start to love the project. And then you have to say, no, we can't do this anymore. It's always difficult. It's never an easy decision. But we, we promised each other when we started in this team that that is one of the keys to, to realize how much funds do we have. If we have to bet on one of these four or five, which one can we as a team progress, giving the amount of funds we have to be able to deliver something that can move on uh, with a partner or that we can then raise more capital to run on our own. And, and yeah, it's a lot of factors. But to say no, let's put it down. Oh, that's the hardest thing to do. What happens with those projects that you put to one side? We remember them. And as science progress, sometimes there is a new, something new in the scientific literature that makes us realize, oh, this is the way we should have approached it. And then, of course, you can look at it again. Um, but to be to keep your keep the focus in the team, you have to say, well, we stop this and we don't do anything more for now. Sometimes um, I think it's good that it stays there, and someone else will probably pick it up when it's time. So of course it's immensely satisfying that you picked the right project. Then. Yeah, one could say so. If if we made that we made that choice early on, and and we were lucky to make the right one this time. Did you know? I mean, you must have had a feeling then that this is the one. Yeah. Even if you put costs and everything like to one side. Um, yeah, I think we, I mean, there is another way we work and I didn't mention that before, but business development has been a key, at least to me when I started uh, to join the team. And by making sure that the asset you develop is of interest to others and listen to what they ask you and what they like to see the next time you meet them. Then you kind of get a, a little bit sense of this is interesting. This is something that someone wants to know more about. Uh, and of course, I think that is extremely important. No matter what kind of business you have, you have to know that the one that is going to buy your product, project, whatever, is there to actually do so when you're ready. So you're always considering it from two angles, from, from the buyer and from the scientific. Yeah, I think so. The scientific part, of course, but also the business development part. And those two has to kind of go in the right, work with each other very closely. Uh, and that is something we do on a daily basis. And then, of course, Mark was interested. And I realize this sounds a bit like a gossipy question, but how did you meet? How was the first contact with Merck? Was it a conference? How, how does it work? So we met, as I think a lot of different biotech and pharma companies actually do, we met in partnering conferences and we met a lot of different companies and Merck was one of them. So that is also a conscious decision that as soon as you can start to talk about your program, uh, of course, sometimes you can't because you don't want to reveal things, it's too soon, but as soon as you can, then I think it's a good idea to get out there and see if you can if you can gather some interest and understand what is it that we have to deliver to get the next meeting and the next meeting and the next meeting. Yeah, because that's what happens from the first contact. It's a series of meetings. Is it series of meetings? Yes. With maybe several interested parties then, and then it whittles down to. Yeah, the way we work, we we try to to meet several parties. Uh, I think you should. There are all different type of questions you can gather and and. Companies have different uh, strategies moving forward. Uh, even Big Pharma has their own strategies. So it's extremely important to meet, um, yeah, different part, a different type of, yeah, both biotech and Big Pharma, I think, and continue that dialogue with uh, more than one party. And what is negotiating with Big Pharma like? I'm going to assume it's a long process. I would say it is, but it's important. I mean, if you want to, this is a very early, early stage asset we worked with this time. And we will have to rely on each other, no matter if it's a big pharma or a small biotech, that we can move these assets and make both um, parties uh, winners in one way or another, even if it looks completely different uh, from, from the different part, what, what winning is, of course. But that is the most important thing. And then you can't, you can't rush things. It takes time to understand each other, to build confidence and to understand that you're moving uh, towards this, yeah, in the same direction. 
Yeah, because I assume you have a clear idea of, of the value of your asset and then in the end, I suppose it's a compromise. Yeah, I think all deal making is, is a compromise, but there is more to, to deal making than the actual value, I think, uh, because this is a long term project if, uh, if we are all successful and, and you have to think the whole way through. And then there is a lot of other factors than the actual financials, perhaps, uh, that is extremely important. Because yeah, it's a, supposed to be a long-lasting relationship. Yes, and it's a, it's supposed to be, uh, I mean, what we agree upon. If you have a conversation or if it's deal-making, what you agree upon is something you should be able to deliver upon all the way through. And that's why it's so important, I think, to take the time you need. Yeah. So what happens next in this collaboration? So this is a license and collaboration deal. So in the, we will collaborate with the team, uh, Merck team, uh, and continue to develop the asset, the molecules. And we are really looking forward to that. And, and it, this is the next stage for us, of course. So it's about both giving and getting to know um, new things, I hope, that can strengthen our pipeline moving forward. So going forward then, what will Achillean's involvement if we talk in practical terms, look like? So in the collaboration moving forward, it's, it's already started, of course, and we enjoy the collaboration. And our responsibility will mainly be the medicinal chemistry and continue with the work of the molecule series we already started. So that's the first deal done, but I guess there is no resting on your laurels for you. So what is next for Achillean? So we will continue with novel projects. We have a few already up and running, not public yet, but we work exactly the same as we did when we started the Alnatac program. And then we have our project or program Regulus, which is a JAK1 inhibitor and it, it's entering phase, it's in phase one now and we will continue and design the phase two study uh, in eosinophilic esophagitis. So that is the next step for us. So hopefully we will have you back here to talk about the next big deal for Achillean. Oh, I hope so. That would be really nice. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you.